Sorry for the uh, small glitch. Um, I mean, let me actually uh, not thank the organizers uh, because I came to know about uh, that I'm giving the talk uh, today morning, only yesterday, quite late, and that is why the uh, talk was not on that computer. But uh, I'll uh, sort of uh, uh, tell you about the kind of things that we have been doing uh, since the last meeting. And uh, this is a particular uh, one preprint that's out, and there are uh, things that uh, are uh, yeah, being cooked. Uh, Right now, uh, so uh, so let me start by uh, 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 acknowledging the uh, people uh, who are really my teachers. I've learned a lot from them. Uh, the heroes of the story are uh, Obhijit Das, our uh, graduate student, and Shori Chakraborty, uh, our postdoc, and is a, a, a last a fraction of the ICTS gang. We also. Uh, 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 the, uh, collaborating with Roderick Moisner and David Hughes uh, on uh, the kind of, uh, on the things that we uh, I'll talk about. Okay, so I'll uh, present numerical results uh, on uh, classical Heisenberg spin chain uh, on, with periodic boundary conditions. So I have uh, the n number of sites, and at every site I have one uh, classical spin. So the degrees of freedom are these three component classical spins uh, with unit norm. Uh, 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 their magnitude is one at every site. Okay, so the Hamiltonian is again the simple nearest neighbor uh, ferromagnet. Uh, I don't, uh, so uh, it, uh, almost all the results that I'm going to say are valid for, for also the antiferromagnet. So uh, this is the nearest neighbor interactions. So that I'll uh, talk about some dynamics, and the dynamics is generated uh, by the uh, spin precision, which is generated by the spin Poisson bracket. Uh, which is this uh, for uh, arbitrary functions f and g of the spin, and this is the more um, uh, useful form that we would use. Okay, so uh, so the protocol for the numerical experiment that I'll uh, uh, talk about is as follows. So I'll generate uh, uh, p random spin configurations, which can be looked up uh, looked upon as infinite temperature Gibbs ensemble, uh, the, which I'll refer to as uh, this. The, uh, this then runs from 1 to p, uh, which I'll call copy 1. Now, I'll make a copy of this initial configuration, each of them, and uh, uh, what I'll do is that change only one spin, say, at x equal to 0 by small amounts, such uh, rotated by small amounts, such that the unit norm is preserved, and call that uh, copy 2 uh, of the initial configuration. Okay, so more about this uh, de uh, details. So suppose I take uh, spin at x equal to zero and rotate it by small amounts epsilon uh, about some random vector chosen like this. So these are the two se uh, sets of initial configurations now. Okay, so now we take these two initial conditions, uh, um, uh, uh, two configurations as initial co uh, conditions and run this precision, uh, precisional dynamics independently uh, for both the copies. And after time t, we generate two uh, configurations uh, which come out of this uh, uh, evolution. So, so uh, once we have these uh, uh, copies, uh, what we can do is that for uh, different times t, uh, we can calculate the usual dynamical correlator, uh, spin correlator, say I use copy one, uh, I mean, there is no difference really between copy one and copy two as far as this, statistic, uh, this uh, is concerned. So I uh, calculate the uh, uh, correlator uh, uh, between spin at uh, site x and time t, and spin at site zero and time zero, and average over initial conditions, all the p uh, configurations. Okay, so what I get is basically diffusive uh, uh, behavior. Uh, this uh, the uh, dynamic correlator scales as e to the power minus x squared by uh, t, um, and this is expected. And we do not have any secondary peaks or any sign of ballistic behavior. And this uh, data, uh, which uh, uh, collapses very well uh, within this, and this is the autocorrelation. Okay, so now. Uh, what we do is another uh, uh, measure, another statistics uh, statistic, which we call the cross correlator. So that's uh, defined as follows. So we had two copies, and remember we generated uh, to uh, evolve them uh, with the same time. So we take one spin from the first copy, the, and the same spin from the second copy at time t, and take a dot product. Okay, and then average it over the initial conditions. Okay, 
I, in fact, what we do is that uh, instead of calculating uh, the, this cross uh, uh, correlator, uh, we take the one minus of this, which up to a constant is just uh, the, the difference of the two spins uh, at the same site in the two copies. Okay. So in a way, this uh, uh, thing d of x of t measures how, uh, how the difference of the two initial conditions that I uh, uh, put in evolve uh, with time. So remember, I put in um, uh, the, uh, the difference only at site x equal to 0. OK. So, the, so uh, before looking at d of uh, um, uh, x of t, let's look at what this uh, thing does without averaging, like for one uh, condition. So this is x. And this is t. So as I evolve the system, this is uh, this quantity, uh, the difference of them, uh, uh, actually uh, without the square. So you can uh, see all the uh, components. OK? So this is what it looks like uh, the, as it evolves with time. So you can see that uh, the, after a point, this is uh, uh, 0 uh, within a new, uh, the machine position, and uh, there is this uh, uh, front which is going out in x. So once we average over initial condition, this is what d looks like. So this, uh, this is x again, and this is t. And uh, here d is uh, non-zero. Here d is 0. As you go through this, these are the, um, value, uh, uh, this is the system size, and this is the value of the initial perturbation. Okay, and so it opens up sort of a light cone where uh, the the information that I uh, put in about the difference in the initial condition sort of spreads uh, the, uh, the within the, this light cone in the sense that uh, the, these areas don't know about the difference of the initial condition, but these areas know because he has uh, uh, d, d measures that. Okay, so. So you can see that uh, uh, in spite of the fact that uh, this two-point correlator was diffusive, the, uh, the, this uh, issue uh, that uh, spatial localized difference in initial uh, condition uh, is spreading ballistically uh, with this, um, uh, which is measured by this uh, uh, cross-correlator. OK, so that's uh, the central um, issue that uh, we want to, uh, uh, of this uh, uh, story. So uh, some more details. Uh, so one can uh, do a uh, look at how uh, d of x of t looks like as a function of x at different times. And it, uh, so, uh, so uh, if one fixes time, say, uh, t equal to 182, uh, and then look at uh, the, how the uh, profile looks like, so uh, it, uh, the information uh, which started from x equal to 0 has reached certain x, and after that it exponentially decays, and that uh, the spread of this front increases uh, the, in the space as I increase time. So one can, uh, the, we can sort of uh, find out a functional form of this uh, 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 decay uh, or the growth region of uh, D, which is of this form. So notice that there are two uh, things, this uh, mu and this v, uh, which uh, uh, characterizes this uh, 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 effect. So mu uh, the, within numerical uh, uh, estimate is 0.51, and v is uh, 1.67. Um, and uh, the mu characterizes the exponential change and is related to sort of the Lyapunov exponent uh, the, the, uh, 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 at which the perturbation is growing at a particular point in x. And uh, v uh, characterizes the ballistic spread. Uh, which uh, is uh, typically referred to as the butterfly speed uh, uh, in the system. And uh, so, uh, so basically, the uh, issue of uh, the spatiotemporal chaos and butterfly effect in many body systems, in the classical system, uh, 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 this suggests that it is characterized by two things, one, the Lyapunov exponent and the butterfly speed. And the butterfly effect is a combination of these two complementary effects, uh, this characterizing the exponential growth and this characterizing the spread of uh, these perturbations that I put in locally. 
So things I'll uh, leave out from this talk. I have, um, maybe I'll, uh, since I see two minutes, I'll uh, say some of it. So uh, you can refer to the poster that Obijit is uh, 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 pointing out, uh, giving uh, the uh, later today. Uh, I think so. The particular thing I won't discuss is uh, the uh, uh, relation between this. Uh, cross correlated uh, the, which is, uh, seems to be the classical limit of the measure of scrambling uh, in quantum systems which has been looked at uh, quite seriously uh, recently the uh, uh, i'll show you a slide about fluctuations of this wave front and its possible relation with uh, kpz equation so so this is uh, uh, one so uh, this is basically a more detailed plot of this heat map plot that i was showing you so uh, the, uh, one can ask Basically, uh, uh, the, this D uh, the, that I was uh, pointing out, the cross correlator, uh, the, uh, uh, one can ask at various x when D reaches uh, a particular value D naught and uh, calculate that time to be T of D naught. So when you average over uh, all the, the different configurations, you get this black line, which is uh, the, the velocity. But uh, from configuration to configuration, it has uh, this spread which uh, scales as x to the power two third, and uh, the, we have numerical um, uh, so, uh, numerical data which suggests that one can uh, think about this uh, d uh, unaveraged uh, delta s squared, which is the difference uh, by this uh, the initial magnitude of perturbation. One uh, uh, can, if one thinks about that as a height field, which uh, we can explain some of these data um, uh, more, more carefully. Okay. So uh, this is again uh, connected to the Lyapunov issue, which we, um, uh, the, 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 uh, we have done uh, numerical calculations on um, uh, linearized systems uh, to calculate uh, the Lyapunov exponent and also the nonlinear uh, full equation of motion. And we see that as epsilon goes to zero, the nonlinear uh, the equation of motion actually uh, goes towards a linear part, um, uh, which is what we expect. Uh, Mm. Uh, okay, so some numerical details. We have uh, gone up to uh, system size 2048 and uh, time steps uh, of this. Uh, we have been using uh, the Runge Kota 4 uh, with uh, energy and magnetization conservation of this amount, and the configuration averaging has been 10 to the power 4 or 10 to the power 5. Let me just uh, point out two th uh, things. Uh, the, the questions that we uh, uh, are uh, sort of uh, thinking about is that how to calculate the is butterfly velocity analytically, or more, a sharper way of putting this um, question is that given a single system as opposed to our protocol, which which involves two systems, what is the correlator that we need to calculate which has this information about ballistic spread? Uh, we know that the two point doesn't. And which physical observable uh, we need to measure uh, the things like analogs of Lok, Schmittico, et cetera, might be relevant to this. OK, so let me put up my summary here. And uh, there are these two points uh, that uh, we have been uh, trying to think about more carefully, but uh, questions and feedback would be useful. Thanks. So, uh, Dynamics. Does it tend to order the system in some way? What is the nature of the order that so comes about eventually? This is, uh, Heisenberg spin chain and sort of infinite temperature, so there is no ordering. No, no. So, but your dynamics does it drive it to some kind of order, or what does that? Why do you choose this particular dynamics? Uh, so this is the spin precision dynamics, which conserves uh, the uh, to, uh, all the conserved quantities of the Hamiltonian. So, if you had some other form of dynamics, would you still have the same type of light cone effect and? I, I mean, I don't know what you have in mind when you say other forms of dynamics, but right. So, so it's it's ferromagnetic in nature. Does it, for example, no. drive it towards a ferromagnetic state or no? no. So the uh, yeah, initial total magnetic. So its total energy is conserved. Dynamics and that's zero uh, for this random configuration. Uh, so I mean, is this your are your statements uh, uh, restricted to the type of dynamics that you have chosen about? The nature of the spread of correlations. So I think uh, as long as the Hamiltonian dynamics is concerned, like uh, ferromagnet uh, at next nearest neighbor or so, 
uh, this remains uh, same. But if you uh, are uh, trying to uh, ask uh, whether if I include noise, etc., uh, does this remain stable? I think so, but I don't uh, know for sure. Thank you. So we can continue the discussion later. So uh, thank the speaker again.